Um, so good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to St. Michael and All Angels Online. Um, it's the 11th Sunday after Trinity, um, 23rd of August. Um, Janice is away this week in Norfolk, um, but I'm here, Sarah Spence. Um, a, a couple of notices I wanted to, to say before we started. Um, firstly, to say that the parish reps or the gang of six as we're known, are meeting the new vicar on Wednesday, Paul Moore, so that's very exciting. Um, and we're going to talk about him arriving and plan for um, services to start um, again in the church. And we're aiming for um, our patronal um, festival at the end of September, 27th of September. And Gilbert hopefully is going to play the organ for us, which is uh, exciting. Um, but we'll, and Graham is very kindly taking the service, but we'll talk more about that and, and let you know what's happening. Um, Bernard is leading us this morning. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you, Sarah. Can you all hear me? Thumbs up? Yes, yes, we can. Very good. Well, a big hello to everyone. And uh, I don't know what our geographical reach is, but uh, certainly to Northumberland. So hello. Hello, Sarah's dad to have you with us um might be in norfolk <laughs> we don't know listening in but um to any who are sharing as well perhaps at a later viewing of this recording hello to you and it's good to have you worshiping as well a few moments of quiet before we come to worship our god Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And a verse from Psalm 143. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, Lord, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go. For to you, I lift up my soul. It's this, uh, this recognition that God knows us through and through, uh, regardless of whatever state we feel we are in. And uh, this is something that comes through in the following hymn and in our psalm as well. Words of this hymn from Psalm 139. O oh God, you search me and you know me. And uh, you can sing along at home to the words on the screen or just follow them. O oh God, you know me, you search me and you know me.
recognizing that we've come to worship God, who is the maker and keeper of our days. We now acknowledge our faults and shortcomings as we say this confession together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Lord, be within us to assure us of your pardon, without us to preserve, over us to shelter, and beneath us to support, before us to direct, behind us to bring us back, round about us to feel strength for today. Amen. Now our psalm for this morning is Psalm 124, a picture of uh, the people of Israel singing as they wind their way up to the hilltop city of Jerusalem, returning, delivered from all their uh, uh, terrors of exile and their experiences on the way, their pains and threats of life. Yet they can, like us, in confidence say, we know our help is in the name of the Lord our God, maker of heaven and earth. If God the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, had not the Lord been near when foes attacked us, filling us with fear, and when their wrath against us reached its height, alive we had been swallowed in their spite. We would have been enveloped by the flood. Over our heads, the torrent would have gone. But praise the Lord, for he had set us free and has not left us to their cruelty. We have escaped, just as a captured bird out of the fowler's net has been set, have been set free. The snare is cut. We are at liberty. Our help is in the name of the Lord our God, who made the earth and heavens by his word. Our first reading from the epistle to the Romans. I think, Jean, you need to unmute uh, if you can, please. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bernard. <laughs> okay, I'll start again. <laughs> um, so the first reading is taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 8, a living sacrifice. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Humble service in the body of Christ. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, through though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts 
according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be Thank to God. God. <laughs> White. Now Hilly is going to read our second reading from Matthew's Gospel. Um, the second reading, reading is taken from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. For the word of God in scripture. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. In the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Recently, the phone rang, inconvenient moment actually, but uh, <coughs> she deserved listening to. It was a lady from the Church Mission Society, CMS. Uh, it's one of the missions that we support as a church annually with uh, some of our giving. CMS is engaged uh, in gospel mission, both overseas. Uh, we visited one of their projects in Uganda uh, and in this country, uh, quite a lot of work in inner city projects. She asked, could, could we answer a few questions about our church? What sort of church are we? Is it uh, rural or urban? What's its age profile? And uh, during the pandemic, uh, she was interested to know, are we still able to have Bible studies and prayer groups? Do we have a mission committee? all very searching questions for us both as individual Christians and as a church. In other words, she was asking, what sort of church are we? We've just read in Matthew's Gospel of Jesus conducting his question time. As so often today, the claims, teaching and authority of Jesus were not popular with those concerned for their own preoccupations or their self-importance. His time was short, his days in the, the, in, uh, alive were numbered. And the problem was, was there anyone who understood him? Was there anyone who had recognized him for who and what he was? Were there any who, when he was gone, would carry on his work? Obviously, that was a crucial issue and problem, for it involved the very survival of the Christian church and faith. If there were none who had grasped the truth, or even glimpsed it, then all his work was undone. If there were some few who realized the truth, his work was safe. So Jesus was determined to put all to the test 
and ask his followers who they believed him to be. Notice he does this with a courtesy. First, he asks what others are thinking of him. It's a more gentle question than his second one. We don't mind what sorts of questions uh, uh, we get asked and as long as they're about others. It can be easy to talk about what we think of other people. Media interviewees we hear every day readily describe what they think of others' opinions, but become evasive and annoying uh, when a straight answer is pressed for uh, as to how they themselves see things. And Jesus knew the Jews were divided over what exactly a kingly Messiah would accomplish, though they believed he would free them from uh, an oppressive Roman rule. And Jesus says to Simon that his kingdom is not a geopolitical empire, but a community of people living in recognition of the kingdom of God that he has been teaching about and demonstrating. So here in uh, Caesarea Philippi, <clears throat> the center of Caesar worship in the north on what's now the Syrian border, this amazing carpenter stands and asks his followers who they believe him to be. Then after his easier question comes the clincher, the one that gets to the heart of what it means to be a Christian. Jesus asks Peter, as we each are challenged, what about you? Who do you say I am? Impulsive Peter jumps straight in with the answer, and the disciple is the one who would often let Jesus down or regret his behavior. But Jesus knows him through and through, and knows that by God's grace, Peter will be one who will go on to have a strong faith and with Jesus taking a priority in his life. What could be a more top marks answer? Peter saying, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. We might know every doctrine and theological opinion, still not be a Christian. Christianity never consists in knowing about Jesus, it's knowing him. Now, uh, I've been thinking that sadly the church in our country has not had a good press recently. Its actions and behavior often seem far removed from the teachings of Jesus and from what we read in scripture. Cathedral choirs, removal of pews, financial management, doctrinal squabbles, governance and safeguardings, they're all familiar uh, <coughs> contentious issues we hear about. But again, it's easy to comment on what others are doing, but what of ourselves? In our reading from Romans, Paul gives us guidance. We are to live lives that should first and foremost recognize the living God and accordingly live with that as our priority. We're to live transformed lives. I like that word transformed, it's amazing. It reminds me of a, a TV program, I believe, that um, shows transformed properties, completely uh, renewed. Similar things when happens when someone whose life has been completely turned around by the transformative encounter with Jesus Christ. We can probably all think of people to whom that has uh, happened. What amazing change we see in them. And living this way is the hallmark of being a Christian. It's what makes the church distinctive and effective in our society, like salt and light. 
Christian truth is never merely a matter of information, but of each of us being transformed, each of us serving one another. And in our differing ways, being that body of people that Paul speaks about uh, often in his letters that others will be, want to be part of, all because we live offering humility, encouragement, generosity, mercy and cheerfulness. As there was great joy for those first disciples who encountered the risen Jesus, so that same joy will show itself in us when we recognize Christ, the Son of the living God. A good friend in the village said to me uh, very early on, early days of this pandemic shutdown, I do hope that all the implications of the recent troubles mean that we as humans do not entirely find ourselves thinking of surviving, but live rather uh, to live, surviving to live rather than recognize the joys of living. And joy is a gift of the spirit. So who do we say Jesus is? If like Peter we can say he is the son of the living God, then we can be transformed and renewed and find we instinctively know how to please God seems to me that to understand God, the infinitely amazing creative power that brings about the whole of creation, we need to recognize he has revealed himself as the living God, Christ-like, and in that in him, as Michael Ramsey said, is no unchrist-likeness at all. With this understanding, we become members of a living church. And theologian William Barclay put it this way, Christianity does not mean reciting a creed, it means knowing a person. Amen. Just going to have a couple of moments now to listen to a piece of music and be still. The most conscious this morning of the great loss of Mary to Andrew and all the family. And we hold them strongly in our thoughts at this moment. Time when we've grown accustomed to Andrew playing those bells. And it was lovely to see you this morning, Andrew. Such courage to come and play them to us. It was a lovely tune. It almost made me cry because it was like a, a Scottish metrical psalm tune. I don't know what it was, but it was very beautiful. Thank you. You shared those gifts of ringing bells with Mary since you came into the community and your years of experience at ringing, and Mary sharing her gifts quietly and with her smile in the community. So today, I'm reminded of these words, every life, including our own, is precious to God. Christians have always believed that there is hope in death as in life, and that there is new life in Christ over death, even those who share such faith find that there's a real sense of loss at the death of a loved one. Those who mourn need our support and consolation. Our love and remembrances of them today is part of that continuing support. So listening to this short piece of music allows us time to think about that which we know to be the surest basis for all our hopes.
Now we share together in saying that which we believe and affirm in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And our time to pray together. The response to uh, my words, God of all, are be with us. Uh, sorry, be with those. So God of all, be with those. Let's pray. We pray this morning for Andrew and all the family of Mary Knight. We give thanks for Mary's life and we hold her loved ones in your light. Loving God, we pray for the world around us, the disease which sweeps through it, those trying to mitigate its harm, those seeking a vaccine, those who have lost loved ones, those caring for those it has struck down, those trying to keep going through it all, those whose neighbourhoods are in the spotlight, those maintaining an infrastructure that some parts of the world can only dream of, those parts of the world where the virus is yet another relentless blight. Those with power to help, those with responsibilities for big decisions, those situations that have now been overlooked, the world itself, abused and in danger, those complex ecologies of holy creation. God of all, be with those. Nurturing God, we pray for the world around us. We pray for young people, those in chaos with no grades at all and no prospects. Those whose prospects have been disrupted and are unclear. Those having to clear up the mess, emotional and logistical. Those who don't care. Those with no one to care for them those about to go back to school, those who work in the schools. God of all, be with those. Peace building God, we pray for the world around us. We pray for places of war, injustice and oppression. There are so many. We pray for the people of Belarus, the places where change is needed, those who work for the common good, those who are trying to build a better place, those who are trying to find a better place, those who seek shelter and safety, those who seek cooperation and goodwill across national boundaries, those who seek to thwart it, those with difficult negotiations to make, those who have no voice, those who are forgotten, those who are disregarded, those on the margins. God of all, be with those. All knowing God, bring our deepest prayers to you now in a moment of silence.
I use now a version of the Lord's Prayer that I invite you to say with me. Abba, may your name be respected among us. May your reality be alive in us. Help us to focus on what is really important. Let us affirm this each morning. The forgiveness of debt is your way of life. Let it be ours too. And when we are carried into evil schemes, let us have the strength to say no. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today. God of glory, the end of our seat searching, help us to lay aside all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Owen, for sharing those prayers with us. And uh, before our final hymn, thank you also for uh, those who helped in our worship today, for Jean reading and Hilly. Hilly, are you back to school soon, I guess? Sadly, yes, on Thurs the first Thursday of September. And Rupert. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, we all hope that goes well, and we're thinking of all young people returning. It says in the Bible that uh, we are to get wisdom, and I guess a school is a place where you get some wisdom, and that's what we all pray for. So, hope that goes well. And um, <clears throat> thanks also to Glenn, I think, who's done some playing. And uh, to Sarah for um, keeping us all <laughs> uh, technology up there in, in Northumberland as well. So that's great. And, and you know, Janice circulating things around. We're so grateful to them both and different things they do and uh, sharing those gifts with us. And of course, especially we thank you, Andrew, for sharing those lovely bells with us at the beginning of this morning. Thank you. So our final hymn picks up that uh, thought of Jesus being um, a living Lord, coming as living Lord to our living church. And we hope it'll be living in uh, active ways again before too long. We pray for that. Our final hymn, Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us.
Thank you, Glenn. Lovely to have live music. Thank you for that. Now our closing prayer. Eternal God, the light of the minds that know you, the joy of the hearts that love you, and the strength of the wills that serve you, grant us so to know you that we may truly love you, so to love you that we may truly serve you, whose service is perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we entrust our past to your mercy, our present to your love, and our future to your wisdom. Amen. Amen.